Well, alrighty. I'm finally on the water. I've been here for about 45 minutes, goobering around. Uh, I was deciding whether or not I actually wanted to launch. But I drove here. And the first part about catching fish is uh, showing up. So I'm here. I'm at Fountainhead Regional Park. Uh, I am on the Aquaquan Reservoir. And I am quite literally the only person on the water uh, as of right now. Um, yeah, I got here right as sunrise. And I was expecting at least a couple people. But no, I am by myself. I have this entire reservoir to myself. So what I'm going to do is do some exploring. And if anything looks juicy, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple tosses. But I am expecting kind of a tough day of fishing. Um, obviously, it's raining. It's been raining for a while. I'm going to have to take this raincoat off. I'm already getting hot. Um, and it's a bit of a cold front. So it is May 15th. And for the last two days, it's been colder than it was um, on the 13th. On, no, 12th. Oh, it's 12th, this Sunday. Um, so I'm just going to goober around for a bit. I'm going to make a couple casts at things that look uh, a little bit saucy. And I'll see you again once I got uh, some slime on the boat. It's going to be a good day. Ah, that was a good hit. That was not a piece of wood, because if it was a piece of wood, it would have gotten snagged. Such is the way of the chatterbait. Comes through grass really well, but they suck at anything other than grass. I'm just gonna put a uh, spinnerbait on here instead. So there are active fish today, whether or not they're just spawning or if they're bass or anything feeding, I don't know. But I am to find out. I definitely aim to find out. I'm hoping to get on a really juicy spinnerbait bite. That'd be great. This thing I think is just going to be the ticket today. Slow rolling. Big old spinnerbait. Half ounce. It's only a half ounce. It's not huge. But I can work a spinnerbait through a good amount of cover. Why did it do that? There's a turtle over there. Yeah, like I said, it's probably going to be real tough fishing today. I'm not under no illusions about that. Oh, come on over that. The depth changes pretty quick here. <clears throat> not unexpected. There are fish on the bottom below me. They are moving. That's also 10 foot down. That's ridiculous. 15 foot right here. It's ridiculous. I love it. One thing about these spinners baits is they will come right through the grass like this. I love it. And I have gotten some pretty gnarly strikes right in the middle of grass like that. He's just coming right through. Not a problem at all. A little four by four. I think these come through grass better than chatterbaits, but that's just my opinion. And they don't get hung up in wood like a chatterbait does. I think spinnerbaits are kind of underrated these days. Everyone's like hopped on the chatterbait craze, and I just really like throwing a spinnerbait. It's more subtle, I think, I know, than a chatterbait. The Mount Laurel blooming. Oh crap. Well, that does not help my situation at all. Yeah, don't do that, folks. That was not, uh, not ideal. I want to fish shallow, but there's not really a whole lot of shallow here. Oh, darn it. Like a chunk out of that dogwood. Well, dogwood, that's cherry tree. Sorry, cherry tree. There we go. There's a good fish. 
There's a good fish. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, a strong fish. Oh man. And he smoked it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Post spawn. Look at the tail. This, this fish is all beat up. Back up. Back up. Sorry, let's get your jaw rearranged there, buddy. Sorry about that. You kind of trucked that. All right, that's that's a solid fish. Get a weight on that one. Zeroed out. Three six, three six, man, three six and three eighths. That fish probably would have gone four pounds or more during the spawn. That's a good fish. That's a real good fish. That's why I came here. That's absolutely why I came here to catch a really nice fish. Not a PB, but that tells me something. They want a moving bait. Spinner bait might be the ticket. Oh, that is a that is a beautiful fish. A little beat up, again, the spawning tail's rubbed out from the spawn, but that's probably a male, to be honest. But that's a good fish. Later, buddy. You have a good one. <laughs> little shell. Put on a little shell. All right. All right. Data point. I'm going to shut that off, and I'm just going to cast the bank for a little while. That may have been just a pure reaction strike, but man, that, that was a solid fish. That was a good, solid thump. I like it. All right, I'll get it over that. Let it sink. Because I'm sitting in deep water right now. I'm this close to the bank. I'm, I'm in like 30 foot of water, I think. Uh, that doesn't feel right. That didn't feel right at all, because it wasn't right. Alright, let's move on. I want to hit a lot of these coves, but I want to work the structure towards these banks too. I mean, this looks great. This looks fantastic. Also notice uh, having like a gold blade on overcast days tends to work a little bit better. Which is why I picked this one as opposed to just a pure white spinnerbait. Just to see what would happen. Just to see what would happen. And it seemed to work. I am getting wet as heck. Probably should have put my waders on, but whatever. Too late now. That felt like a fish, even though I think it was just a stick. They're definitely post spawn here and post spawn is a time of year when I'm just I, I'm not that good fishing for bass um, Yeah, I know they're eating bluegills right now because the bluegills are starting to spawn things like that because everything Except for I think crappie spawn after bass um, So the bass are keying in on everything else um, So they're kind of nearby some stuff but they do pull off. I know they, they go to different types of structure and things like that. So I'm, I gotta teach myself how to fish this time of year. I really do. Cause bass hate bluegill. They're nest robbers, they're annoyances. And they're also a primary food fish in many places. Darn it, that's not ideal. What in the hell did I just do? Damn, Adam. That's, that's ugly. All right, let's let's figure this out. That's, of course, it's around that. Now it's 
wrapped around the line, but I'm not I'm less worried about that. And yeah, I'm still sorting out my battery issue with my um, chart plotter here, so or my sonar. So I'm not really doing too too much with the battery. Forty foot. This close. I'm in forty foot of water. What the heck? That's insane. That is insane. See, it feels kind of nice having a lake all to yourself, though. <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> 40 foot of water. What the heck? I gotta get closer up. This is ridiculous. This is the definition of a bluff wall. Jeez. I need a freaking bigger weight or a shaky head or something. Snake heads in here? Not in that deep. Snake heads do not like deep water from my experience. But, I mean, I've never caught one, so I could be totally full of crap. That's a big old snapping turtle right there. You just saw those reeds move. <laughs> I'm gonna do some exploring. Something shallower. I need something a lot shallower. Another little bassy bass. A little dinkopotamus. All right. Nothing to write home about, but still a pretty little fish. Thank you for the fight. That was fun. I like those little ones. They're fun. They're scrappy. They're real scrappy. I like them. Still trying to catch a white crappie. I've caught black crappie for the year. I know there's white crappie in here too. And I'm pretty sure this is the only lake in Northern Virginia, that's part of the Northern Virginia Park Authority, that actually still has white crappie um, because they closed Lake Manassas um, a couple of years back, I believe. Uh, as far as I remember, I'd have to do some more research on that because I know it's closed, I just don't remember when it closed. Fish right beneath the boat there. The rain's mostly stopped. It's just all the excess moisture dripping off the trees now. Good fish, good fish. He came out of there and smashed it. He smashed it. Oh, good fish. Oh, good fish, good fish, good fish. Okay, come on. All right, come on. Come on. That one's even bigger than this morning. Wow.
That's another fantastic healthy fish. Wow, he's been hooked several times. Weigh that one too. Stop it, buddy. Stop it, buddy. Three, seven, and five eighths. Nice. Another picture. There's something in the water moving those reeds right there. All right, later, fishy. Later. It's a good sized fish right there. So both of the big ones have come on the spinnerbait. Hey turtle. Got one. That was a good hit. That was a good hit. Tiny fish, but a good hit. <laughs> nice. Ah, I pierced you through the nose, buddy. Sorry. That was a lot of enthusiasm. He came out from out of that dock and crushed that spinnerbait. Okay, again. That's, that's a size comparison. Size comparison. He just absolutely crunched it. <laughs> Adorable little guy. Later. Oh, I know you saw that. That was ridiculous. There are more fish here than people seem to realize because I've, I've had a pretty solid day for not knowing what the hell I'm doing here I can't complain about this at all the carp wonder why more people don't actually target carp because they're they're a heck of a fight they're kind of a you know underrated food species as well from what I hear I've never actually eaten one, but I'm not averse to trying it. Oh, I know you saw that. That was a good hit. That was a hit. That was a hit. That was a hit. That was a hit. I spooked something else. Like whenever it comes off of that cover, it's like they, they pop it. That plant is, it's obnoxious. I believe that's chicken of the woods growing out of that log. Put this up for a minute. All 
All right, I'm kind of mad I had my uh, camera off just now because I just heard that cormorant violently spray crap into the water. That was horrifying. It was horrifying. I hope it feels better. I do not like constantly getting hung up with this particular lure. It is very annoying. Bandito bug is not weedless by any stretch of the imagination. I am going through more of these just re-rigging than I am actually because I'm getting bites. And that is not how I like to fish. It's very annoying. Very, 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 very annoying. Let's go get another un un -ing snagged. I think I'm going to go through these until I'm out of them and then I'm going to not buy any more because I am not a fan of the way these things work. All right, Cormorant, you got to crap again before you take off? Because they have a habit of doing that. Go on. Go on. Go on. I'm going to cast there whether you're gone or not. Like loons, I do not like those things. Oh, well, maybe you saw that. I didn't have him hooked too good, but as soon as I hit the jig, hit the water, he did it. My camera died and I didn't get it back on in time, but let's try and get another one. He thumped it the second it hit that, off that little stick right there. Those clouds are moving. I think that fish might have gone about a pound. It wasn't too big. much done for the day. Yeah, that carp just jumped right there. I'm just trolling a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty much back to the launch already. I'm trying to teach myself the uh, patience that I'll need to start trolling for trout. I want to try and learn how to do that this summer. There's a couple places I can go. You know, I could head to Raystown, try and troll up there. I could head to uh, Jennings Randolph, troll for trout over there. Or I go down to Lake Mumo in Virginia and try and troll for some trout down there. And that's actually the one I'm probably going to hit most likely next time I get a couple days off. But, yeah, it's been a really good day. It has been a really, really good day. I knew it was going to be tough fishing when I showed up. You heard me say that at the beginning of the video. And it was. It really, really was tough. Like a bite totally shut down right around... 2 33 o'clock you know it's oh, oh. i think i'm just dragging i'm gonna reel it in um completely shut down like at 2 33 o'clock um when the weather started coming back in you know the, the mist has come back the drizzle which is super annoying 
You know, I've had my raincoat on all day. I'm sweating my bohunkas off. Um, you know, it's not even that hot. It's only maybe like 60 degrees right now. But I wore my raincoat all day and I was a little bit wet when it started. And of course that makes things worse when you get very, very wet. And then you, you know, I was cast in and I did a bit of paddling. I, I brought the trolling motor up for a good portion of the day because I was in super shallow areas and in one corner over there. Cold, my legs are a little cold. I didn't wear my waders like I thought I was going to because I drank a lot of tea when I was driving out here this morning and a lot of tea plus waders plus being in the middle of a lake on a kayak is not a good combination when you have to have an emergency leak you know I, I put it I'll put it off you know you one more cast one more cast then I'll do it no no um shimmying out of waders and doing what you got to do in the middle of a lake is not fun especially when there's wakes going by now there's not a lot of wake here um, maximum engine size is 9.9 .9 horsepower here at uh, the Aquaquan Reservoir. And actually, from what I've noticed, the, the rowing folks, the rowing holes, the multi-person boats that have been going by, actually throw more wake than some of the little John boats that have been piddling around, which was surprising. But, speaking of that, a guy in a, a neon yellow shirt, he's been ripping back and forth as fast as that little John boat will take him. And, I don't know. It's kind of like watching those chipmunks earlier. I don't know what he's doing. But he's in there. He's in a hurry to get there. <laughs> but fantastic day. Yeah, really, really good day. I, I have no complaints whatsoever. Um, two really solid fish. Um, both very, very post-spawn. I mean, you saw the, their tails were all beat up and it looked a little bit better. The colors weren't quite 100%, but... One being 3.6 and change, and the other one three or three pounds six ounces and change, and the other one was three pounds seven ounces and change. Two amazing fish. Granted, if I had caught them about a month ago, they probably both would have been over four, maybe four and a half pounds. Both of those fish had a potential to be my personal best, which of course is why I came to this particular lake. Um, I've talked to a couple folks, and I know some people that come here on the regular, and they're catching four, five, six pound fish fairly regularly. Um, I don't know what part they're doing at. I also know they fish out of a boat. They don't fish out of a kayak. So for all I know, they're probably running all the way up to Bull Run or running all the way down to the dam. I don't know. But I thought about uh, hopping out and then going over to uh, the Occoquan River, uh, like launching at Occoquan Park or something like that. But I didn't particularly feel like paying another launch fee. Um, launch fee is $9 uh, if you're non-jurisdictional, which I'm not. I don't live in the area. I don't live in their area. So Nova Parks has a jurisdiction. I'm assuming it's the counties that are right here. Uh, and I'll, when I get up to the little boathouse here, I'll, I'll put a little snippet of the fees and whatnot. Uh, but it's $9 a day to launch, or $9 to launch here. And if I'd hopped out and gone down to the Occoquan River, um, launching at Occoquan Park, I would have had to pay another $9 launch fee. Now, <sighs> granted, if, if I take five trips down here, Minimum five trips to do like this in the morning and the river at night. Um, five trips would pay for the annual pass for non-jurisdiction shore launch, which is me in a kayak, which would be a hundred bucks. Um, and that's for three parks. It's Fountainhead Regional Park where I am, Algonquin Park, which is where I used to fish growing up. And there's another one, but I think it's on the board and I'll show you that later. All right, so I'm gonna cut in here real quick and kind of put in this little clip of what I was talking about. So the launch fees are as follows daily ramp daily shore non-jurisdiction that's the nine dollars i was talking about it's only seven dollars if you're in the jurisdiction so the annual ramp for fountainhead and algonquian that's 145 annual shore i think will count for like everything which is hundred dollars non-jurisdiction so since i don't live in fairfax county anymore i don't get that so and of course, if you want to launch at Bull Run, you have to buy a marina key. Every single year, it's 25 bucks. So, I'm thinking about that. I don't know. Um, boat rentals, I'll have it there for a second if you want to pause and read that. I don't need to rent a boat because I have the kayak. But yeah, launch and rental fees. Um, yeah. So the, the ramp is if I had one of my bigger boats. 
Uh, but it, since it's a shore launch, I don't need a trailer. 100 bucks. So, yeah, maybe. Depending on how much I think I'm going to be doing this fishing here. Um, or in Nova. The Nova Park situation. I might consider it. Maybe. I hear a wood duck behind me right now. That's that squealing sound you hear. Yep, let's get him. Yep, he's not happy about something. Anyway, my allergies are starting to whoop my butt because everything around here, the mountain laurels are blooming, the honeysuckle's blooming, everything's blooming, and my allergies are destroyed. I don't care what kind of meds you take, and your allergies are gonna be nuts here. Tis the springtime. But yeah, fantastic day. We'll be coming back. Uh, even if as tough as it was, getting that kind of fish action. I mean, I'd hate to be here on a good day. That's a lie. I want to be here on a good day. Um, probably going to pop out here again before too long with one of my buddies. Because um, I know there's a lot of other species in here that I just don't know how to catch. Uh, there's flathead catfish, which I've never caught before. Uh, there's a bunch of channel cats. They are you know, self-reproducing. They were stocked a while back, but they aren't anymore because they managed to do their own thing. Um, anyway, I'm going to shut up. I tend to ramble when I'm tired, and I'm very tired because I've been on the water for 11 hours. <sighs> yeah, it's like 6 o'clock right now, and I got on the water at like 6.30. And that was after goofing off for a little bit, deciding whether or not I actually wanted to launch. But, yep, I'm going to get home, get warmed up, get a, something warm in the belly, and prepare for the next one. I'm going to work for the next couple days, and don't know when I'm going to have another day off to take another trip, but uh, we're going to be doing something. I'm going to be filming a couple other things uh, coming up. Uh, I'm kind of going to do a, a once-over of the kayak and how I have it set up and ideas for how I want to change things. Um, that's probably going to be the next video or two. Um, but that's for another time. So that's about all I have for you today. So like I always say, Thanks again for watching. Make sure you find a reason to smile today, and I'll catch you in the next one.